Minister David Babayan, thank you so much for joining me right now. To uh, You are the Foreign Minister of Artsakh to discuss the current situation of Armenia and Artsakh. So people have an understanding of what the reality is that the people of Artsakh and Armenia are facing right now today. Thank you very much. Of course, these kind of conversations are very important because now we face existential threats, probably the most difficult in, in our entire history. And we have to be together to uh, you know, sustain all those difficulties and overcome them. And one of the most important components, the first step in this is to be informed, to have objective information, to be far from uh, you know, speculations, from fake news, from this kind of stuff. You have been the foreign minister of Artsakh for almost two years. Within that time frame, what is the reality like there currently? You see, I, I was appointed foreign minister a month, almost a month later uh, from this devastating 2020 war. And Artsakh now is a uh, wounded entity. It's like a person who lost one of his legs, one of his arms, an eye, his heart, kidney, I don't know, lungs are wounded. So we are like in this situation, in emergency department, so to say. Uh, but we are alive. And this is uh, the key component. Uh, that we continue our struggle and we have this the corresponding spirit to continue our struggle because our struggle is for the entire Armenian nation. It is part and parcel of our historical struggle for liberty, for our rights, for self-determination. It is also a struggle for humanity because what we are facing, we are facing existential and genocidal threats from uh, authoritarian uh, regimes from Azerbaijan and Turkey, which violates all the laws, all, all the principles of international law and democracy and human rights, etc. So this is kind of a litmus test for, for the civilized community, how they are going to respond to this kind of policy of Turkey and Azerbaijan. Because if they neglect it or ignore or they will be indifferent, then this kind of aggression will spill over to other countries too, including to the United States. Don't think that it's a science fiction, no. You can see what kind of dramatic changes have taken place in recent five, 10 years. Um in light of the what happened in two years ago, and then in light of what happened almost two weeks ago, Armenia and Artsakh have not even recovered from the devastation of war in 2020. Um, the impact of having Armenia get attacked once again, while still trying to heal and move forward from what happened in 2020, can you just illustrate what the daily struggle is like there for people? Well, first of all, uh, of course, the most important thing is to uh, somehow stop in uh, external aggression on the part of Azerbaijan because they are trying to violate, they are violating the ceasefire regime, they cut off uh, gas supply, water supply, electricity, internet periodically. Uh, after the 2020 war, we faced many such challenges. So security is a basic component of our, you know, struggle to defend ourselves. It's self-defense. It's, it's not aggression. So this is the most important thing. Of course, here in Artsakh, we have also Russian peacekeeping forces, which are also protecting the security and safety of, of the population. But irrespective of that, Azerbaijan tries to always target civilians in Artsakh, target the same peacekeepers, you see. Uh, the second uh, part of our struggle is 
to uh, heal the wounds of, of the state and people. So uh, some large scale social economic programs have been carrying out in Artsakh with the help of Armenia and diaspora, you see, and we have to reconstruct a lot of uh, settlements to construct new houses, new apartments for tens of thousands of refugees. But of course, without security, everything could one day be futile. We don't want this to happen. This is why we have to close ranks. We have to be, uh, to have a very high level of unity, pan-Armenian unity, because this is the guarantee of our security and future, reliable and decent future. What have you been doing while you've been here? You were in Washington, DC. Who did you meet with and what has been your message and what is your message right now? Well, uh, anytime we visit United States, this is not my first visit. I, uh, I visited United States 10, 12 times. And uh, first of all, we have to divide the visit into two parts. One is meetings with our compatriots, with our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. We consider the uh, Armenia Artsakh Trinity to be the basis of our state building process and philosophy. So we have to do everything possible to strengthen our ties with, with our uh, brethren all around the world. So co consequently, whenever any official from Artsakh visits, United States or any other country, we always meet with diaspora, with different organizations, with just people. The second is of course, meetings with uh, political circles of, of the host country. So in, in Washington, we had uh, quite an intense program. We met, we, we had dozens of meetings in Congress, in Senate, with think tank people, with other representatives of, of the political circles, uh, with mass media, uh, and also in, in California too, we plan to have some very important meetings too. And we must maintain good relations with all those states where we have Armenian diaspora, it's a must. And actually there are two people in the world who can do that, even uh, to have good relations with countries which have problems with each other. These are the Armenian and Jewish people because of the diaspora. So diaspora is, of course, it's, it's our pain because it was formed as the result of genocide, but it's also our pride because our compatriots are uh, people who deserve, uh, you know, well-being, who deserve to be admired of and to always keep close contact with the historical motherland and with Artsakh in particular. What is your message to um, not just the Armenian community, obviously we're trying to reach an audience that is much wider. Your message of oh, how serious the situation is. Situation is very serious. We are uh, at the brink of some maybe tragic developments. And there is still a space to settle to, to uh, you know, um, keep stability by political means. So our message uh, to Armenian community is to be always united, to make Artsakh the most important idea, at least for the coming two, three, five years. So Artsakh-centric policy should be at the heart of Armenian world. As to the US and other countries, we our message is the following. Great powers should pay attention to little countries because if they don't pay attention, they will have great problems in the future. We are struggling for democracy and human rights, not only for ourselves, but also for the civilized community too, because Artsakh and Armenia has been, have been targets of attacks by authoritarian, non-democratic, dictatorial states like Azerbaijan and Turkey. How comes that civilized community is indifferent, is passive in, uh, you know, defending, uh, in this case, small countries and democratic countries against aggression of 
dictatorial states. If this is so, then it is a crisis of values which could bring to unpredictable, rather predictable and very bad, dangerous consequences. Thank you, uh, Foreign Minister. I appreciate your time and also congratulations on the Freedom Award you are receiving from the NCA Thank for all of the much. work that um, you're doing. So congratulations ahead of that. Um, thank, thank you for your time. You too.